Uh, so for this video, we'll be talking about the counselor as a person uh, and a professional. Um, so I, I know when I started working, um, I was so concerned about sounding like a counselor uh, or a therapist and, and acting like a counselor and, and using a theory or an intervention in an appropriate manner that inevitably what happened was that um, I was coming across um, as, uh, to say the least, as a disingenuous um, individual. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to be able to work with a client um, if the client doesn't see me or the counselor um, as a genuine human being. I mean, could you imagine yourself uh, going to meet with somebody to talk about some serious things that are going on in your life um, and the person just seems fake to you. Um, so really what we want to do with, with individuals is achieve genuine contact um, with our clients, right? Um, you know, so I've, I've learned over time how to incorporate my personality into my sessions, my sense of humor, my ways of interacting and communicating with others. Um, and forging relationships within my personal life. And a lot of that has gone into my professional life and how I work with a counselor as a counselor. Eventually, what has happened um, over time is that I've been able to blend my own approach as a counselor with existing interventions and research-based interventions and theories in order to form my clinical approach with clients. I mean, that takes time and that takes practice. What we're not talking about um, is self-disclosure over the, um, the gruesome details of my past um, with every client because that's, that's probably not appropriate. Um, there is a time and a place for self-disclosure when it, when it helps the client. And I usually caution people um, to limit self-disclosure, especially earlier in their career, until uh, they get a good sense of when it's appropriate um, and when it's not quite as appropriate and what their actual intentions are. Um, with such self-disclosure, right? So it's, it's really important though for us um, to be okay with our role and who we are, um, that we're not perfect, that we don't need to sound a specific way or act a specific way, um, but we, we have appropriate boundaries and we're able to be genuine um, with our clients during session and all interaction with our clients. Um, and this is supported by the research. Now, the, the research, vast array of research states that one of the most important things um, in the counseling relationship is that I'm able to develop uh, a therapeutic relationship with my client. If I have a therapeutic relationship with my client, the client's more likely um, to try different techniques and interventions um, and feel that, that he or she has made contact um, with me in session, which can be a therapeutic uh, tool in itself. Right. And there's a lot of inventories out there um, that help you gauge therapeutic alliance. It's something that we use at our group practice with every client, um, be it through video psychotherapy or face to face, um, that the client is perceiving a positive relationship and positive interactions and uh, generally positive about our sessions that um, we're, we're doing a good job and we're on the right path with our clients. So it's really important. Right. And as we start working with people, um, our stuff comes up, right? Um, so, you know, it's, I recommend to all counselors um, in training um, that at least we have an experience of being a client um, in the therapy process, right? So that's counseling for the counselors. Um, and it helps me deal with, with stuff um, that has come up in my life. And, and the work that we do is emotionally um, exhausting and it's emotionally charged work. Um, so there's going to be times in every counselor's career where certain buttons get pushed um, in session um, and it's important that we have a good handle um, on some of our own stuff from our past um, to be able to effectively work uh, with clients. Um, two, I, I believe that it's important for us to understand what it's like to be a client. For me to come into a stranger's office, sign some paperwork, um, and then have this stranger um, do a biopsychosocial assessment where they're going to ask me really sensitive uh, questions about trauma in my past, drug use, my sexual behavior, um, and a lot of other things that are, are honestly pretty intrusive. 
Um, so I believe it's important for people to have that experience um, of what it's like to be a, uh, a, a client, right? To come in and have defenses down um, and be asked those specific questions. Um, inevitably, what's going to come up through some of this work um, or my values um, are going to get touched, right? They could be religious values, just values of interacting with other people in different roles in my life. Me as a father, for example. Um, and it's important that I have a good handle on my values and I'm able to separate those from cases. If I'm unable to separate my values um, from the client's values who I'm working with, um, I'm likely going to lose objectivity. Um, and it's really important that I'm objective with my clients, that I'm not getting pulled into their stuff um, or I'm not pushing my clients away because their values um, really aren't jiving with my values. Right. Um, and that's something that's a continuous process. Right. Um, of me checking myself and my values and the ability, I guess, not just to to ignore them i don't want to ignore my values right but for a moment place my stuff aside to go into my client's world um, to be able to offer them the best guidance and objectivity that i'm able to um, offer them right and that comes up across a variety of different issues with regard to different cultures and it's important for us to have an understanding um, of what different cultures um, their approach to parenting, say, example, versus what I view um, as my approach to parenting um, as a white male who lives in Pittsburgh, right? And that's going to be different uh, from different areas, different races, different countries, um, right? And it doesn't make my approach to these things better, but within the context within which I live. Um, it works for me in my situation, which might not be the same for my clients. So cultural confidence is really uh, an important part of being an effective counselor uh, because every individual is different. And for us to be effective, we have to be able to get into the world of our clients. Um, right, and cultural confidence is gained over time, some through formal training um, and interacting with clients of different backgrounds. Um, but what has been probably the, the best thing for me is that if I don't understand something uh, about my client's cultural background, that I'm okay asking them. And what I've experienced uh, with my clients um, is that they appreciate the fact that I'm asking. I don't think I've had a client um, over the past 10 years um, who has been offended with a, a cultural question that I have uh, that is beneficent in nature. Um, Right. That I just want to I want to know, I want to understand so I can better understand um, how I can help you. Um, this is tough work, especially when uh, getting started. Right. Um, the book lists uh, a significant list of beginning anxieties um, for new counselors. Right. Um, and different fears that exist. Right. Um, the need to be perfect. Perfect. Um, right the difficulty of confronting another individual in a counseling session when that's absolutely necessary. Um, but, um, you know, I, I strongly recommend that everybody takes a, a strong, a good hard look at the list of um, common worries across new counselors. And mine, as I said in the beginning, was specifically with um, needing to sound like a professional um, and a therapist. Um, and I'm sure that I did. I may have sounded like a therapist that you would see in a movie. Um, but today I sound like a therapist because I'm, I'm, I'm a therapist. And I'm pretty well trained and I, and I mean well and I work really hard um, through research based methods and theoretical methods um, in order to help my clients. But my clients appreciate the fact that I try to bring a sense of humor into it. And it's taken some time to get there. Um, but I do. I strongly recommend that everybody takes a look at this list. Right. With um, the difficulties of not giving advice. Um, and when we get to person centered psychotherapy, uh, I, I really think you should take a good hard look at Carl Rogers uh, with Gloria um, and how he avoids giving advice to a Gloria uh, in a very overt way. But, yeah, take a look at the list. Um, next video will deal with ethics within the counseling profession. Um, and I will see you. I'll see you then.